Disney Wish is Disney Cruise Line's newest and largest ship to date. With 14 decks and 144,000 gross tons, Disney Wish features many new dining concepts, onboard amenities, and one-of-a-kind features that kids and adults alike will enjoy. We just returned from one of the first sailings on the ship and want to share all the details with you as we cover every square inch of this brand new ship with our exclusive Disney Wish ship tour. Welcome aboard, cruisers. I'm DB from Eat Sleep Cruise, where I'll help you plan the perfect cruise so you can see the world one port at a time. And whether you have a cruise booked on Disney Wish or just interested in learning more about the ship, this video is for you as we have the most comprehensive and complete ship tour of this brand new Disney Cruise Line ship showcasing all the public venues and amenities. Like we do for all our ship tours, we're going to stop at the very top of the ship and work our way down, covering every square inch of this new ship. If you're more interested in the new dining and bars on Disney Wish, those are mostly located on decks three, four, and five. So you'll want to skip to around the 16 minute mark. So let's dive in and get started with the ship tour on deck 14. Located on deck 14, all the way forward, you'll find the Chippendales pool. On Disney Wish, families have more pools and more deck space than ever before. The main pool area features six family pools staggered among tiered decks surrounded by lounge chairs on decks 11 and 12. However, this forward pool space is a bit more secluded and quiet. It still includes a good sized pool and plenty of loungers, some even in the shade. Not far from the Chippendales pool, you'll find Currents. Currents is the closest bar to the Chippendales pool. It also overlooks the Toy Story Splash Zone. The bar menu here features a variety of beer, wine, and cocktails, including classic beverages like a Mai Tai, as well as signature cocktails including a Caribbean Mule. The Disney Wish Tower is a first-of-its-kind accommodation set high in the forward funnel of the ship. This nearly 2,000 square foot penthouse in the sky accommodates eight guests and features an elegant design inspired by Disney's Moana. Now, before you get your hopes up, the price for a typical three night sailing in this suite is over $20,000. Heading down to deck 13, you'll find the concierge sun deck all the way forward. This exclusive outdoor space is reserved for those staying in concierge class staterooms. This sun deck features two whirlpools, a waiting pool, a bar, lounge furniture, and a dedicated pool deck host. This forward area also features concierge staterooms. The Disney Wish elevates a concierge experience with 76 concierge staterooms and suites, more than double the number available on other Disney ships. Heading midship on deck 13, on the port side, you'll find the Aquamouse, the first of its kind water attraction at sea. The Aquamouse Raft Ride includes 760 feet of winding tubes suspended high above the upper decks. Here, riders will become immersed in the wonderful world of Mickey Mouse animated shorts, complete with show scenes, lighting, and special effects. You can join Mickey and Minnie on their first excursion company, Port of Misadventures, for two out-of-this-world rides, and during our cruise, we were able to experience the Scuba Scramble. Although, I did have to wait close to an hour for this attraction, and with the entire ride lasting less than two minutes, I'm not really sure if it was worth the wait. All the way aft on deck 13, you will find the Quiet Cove. This adults only space is a tranquil retreat away from all the hustle and bustle of the pool areas on the ship. The Quiet Cove features an 18 plus sun deck, including a whirlpool on the starboard side and the wonderful infinity Quiet Cove pool overlooking the ship's wake. There's also a poolside bar and cafe. This is the ideal area for lounging, sipping, and soaking up the sun without any kids present. So while the children hang out in the kids areas, parents can enjoy some much needed me time in this area. Located on the port side, you will find the Cove Cafe and the Quiet Cove. This poolside lounge serves gourmet coffees, teas, and specialty drinks throughout the day. The Cove Cafe is a perfect quiet spot to escape the heat 
and the kids for a bit of relaxation. And it is the coffee shop that's open the earliest in the morning, usually around 6.30 or 7 a.m. Also located in the Quiet Cove is the Cove Bar. This bar is an open air watering hole serving beer, wine, and cocktails while you are lounging poolside. And it shares the same cocktail menu that you will find in the Currents Bar on Deck 14. On Deck 12 Forward, you'll find the Toy Story Splash Zone. This Toy Story themed play area is designed especially for families with toddlers and young children and includes a splash zone, waiting pool, and family water slide. Both Trixie's Falls, the waiting pool, and the Slidosaurus Rex are both located on the port side of this area. And yes, they're open to little ones as well as adults. While we didn't use Trixie's Falls or the Slidosaurus Rex, we did stop by Wheezy's Freezies. Located nearby this play area on the starboard side, this quick service station serves up a variety of frozen snacks and drinks to enjoy. These include snow cones and Dole Whip. Unfortunately, all the items at this spot are an upcharge, but we can't think of anything more adult for Disney than a Dole Whip spiked with rum. Deck 12 is also home to an open sun deck that has loungers on both the starboard and port side of the ship that overlook the main pool area down on Deck 11. Heading aft on Deck 12, you'll find one of the teen areas. The Vibe and Hideaway are located on the starboard side. This is the area for those who are aged 14 to 17 years old. The Vibe features dedicated programming designed to engage the unique interest of teens. Here, teens can meet new friends, watch movies, play video games, and participate in activities created just for them. The hideaway is a shared space with the Vibe, but it can also be partitioned off for private events and has its own bar and additional seating if it's going to be utilized for adult events. Also on the starboard side, you'll find the Hero Zone, a two-story sports area located on both decks 12 and 13. This indoor sports arena is usually a basketball court that hosts free play as well as organized activities. However, it also is home to the Incredit Games at certain times throughout the cruise. This inflatable obstacle course is a great family activity. Can the parents take on the kids in this challenge? On the top level of the Hero Zone, you will find table games like air hockey, foosball, ping pong, and shuffleboard. The best part is all of these games are complimentary and have no upcharge. While there are teen areas on the starboard side of Deck 12, on the port side, you'll find a number of venues that are exclusively reserved for adults. First up is The Rose. The Rose is a chic lounge located at the entrance of the specialty restaurants Palo, Steakhouse, and Enchante. This venue is inspired by the faithful flower at the heart of the Beauty and the Beast film, from which the restaurants are also themed. With tasteful decor, plush seating, and ocean views, this is a perfect spot to grab a pre-dinner or post-dinner cocktail. The Rose features a signature cocktail menu with many champagne-based cocktails. One of the upscale specialty dining venues on the new Disney Wish is Palo Steakhouse, located aft on Deck 12. This restaurant is an evolution of the Palo restaurant found on other DCL ships. Now, Palo Steakhouse combines authentic Italian dining with a modern steakhouse. In a setting inspired by Cogsworth from the Beauty and the Beast films, guests can enjoy an elegant dinner with ocean views as the backdrop. With warm wood tones, shiny metal, and ornate clocks, this venue feels very luxurious. Palo Steakhouse menu features Italian classics alongside premium cuts of beef. The menu pairs perfectly with Italian wines as well. While dining at Palo Steakhouse, guests can choose from a prefix menu or order a la carte. Reservations are required for this adult dining venue. On the second day of a three-day cruise, Palo also serves brunch, which has a flat fee of $45. Enchante offers the most elegant dining experience on Disney Wish and it's also located aft on deck 12 on the starboard side. 
The specialty restaurant features a gourmet menu crafted by a Michelin-starred chef. Chef Lamont also helped create the menu for the French-inspired Remy restaurant on Disney Dream and Disney Fantasy. With decor inspired by Lumiere from the Beauty and the Beast film, this venue is romantic and intimate with candlelight, shimmering light fixtures, a soft blue color palette, and metallic embellishments. This six course dinner features expertly prepared dishes with seasonal ingredients from around the world for the most upscale and unique menu items. In addition to dinner, Enchante also offers a brunch and a just desserts dining experience. The brunch features a glass of bubbly and a French inspired five course prefix meal. The upcharge for dinner is $125 with an optional extra wine pairing. The collection experience is $195 with an optional extra champagne pairing or guests can choose to pay a la carte. The upcharge for brunch is $75 and the dessert tasting menu upcharge is $60. Like Palo Steakhouse, reservations are also required for this 18 plus dining venue. Midship on Deck 11, you'll find the Mickey and Friends Festival of Foods. Located in the center of all the action on the pool deck, these quick service stations are the perfect spot to grab lunch, dinner, or a snack. The Festival of Food is open most of the day from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. This open air eatery features five themed food stalls Mickey Smoked Stack Barbecue, Donald's Cantina, Daisy's Pizza Pies, Goofy's Grill, and Sweet Minnie's Ice Cream. Disney Wish is the first in the DCL fleet to offer dedicated quick service venues for barbecue and Mexican inspired fare. During a three day cruise, it's tough to sample all the food options that Disney Wish has to offer, though we did enjoy this area, especially the smoke stack and the cantina. Note that Goofy's Grill tended to be open later, closing at 9 p.m. And Daisy's Pizza Pies did reopen later in the evening for late night slices. Within the Mickey and Friends Festival of Foods, you will also find the Lookout Bar. Much like a typical pool bar, the Lookout serves a variety of beer and seltzers, wine and frozen cocktails. It also serves coffee and iced teas as well as juices. Unlike the two other pool bars located in the center of the ship, the Lookout does have a signature menu with some exclusive drinks. The main pool area is located in the center of Deck 11 and Deck 12. Here you will find six different pools, with four pools on Deck 11 and two pools on Deck 12. The two largest pools are Mickey's Pool, which is the forward end of the midship pool area, right below the funnel vision and stage, as well as Minnie's Pool, which is at the aft end of the midship pool area. During our three-day cruise, Mickey's Pool was not open very often because it also doubles as the stage where many events occur like the Sailway Party and the Pirates Rock and Parlay Party. Also on Deck 11, you'll find Daisy's Pool, which is on the port side of Minnie's Pool, as well as Pluto's Pool on the starboard side of Minnie's Pool on Deck 11. On Deck 12, you'll find Donald's Pool located on the port side, as well as Goofy's Pool located on the starboard side. And in true Disney fashion, if you look down at the five pools on deck 11 and 12, you'll notice that they form a hidden Mickey. Just off the pool area on the port side of Deck 11 is Dory's Forget-Me-Nots. This shop features items like t-shirts, sunscreen, and other sundries, and was open limited hours because our cruise consisted of two port days and embarkation day. 
Across the way on deck 12 on the starboard side is the Inside Out Joyful Sweets. For all those with a sweet tooth, you'll definitely want to check out Inside Out Joyful Sweets on Disney Wish. Paying tribute to the film's emotional characters, you'll find statues of the characters and plenty of delicious treats. The venue serves candy-filled chocolate memory orbs, cupcakes, and fresh-made ice cream and gelato at a la carte pricing. Ice cream pricing starts at $3.50 for one scoop, with one scoop of gelato starting at $3.75. Finally, aft on Deck 11 is the Marceline Market. Named for Walt Disney's early childhood hometown in Missouri, Marceline Market includes a variety of cuisine from American classics, international selections, seafood options, soups and salads, baked goods and desserts, and more. During our cruise, the Marceline Market was open most days for breakfast starting around 7 a.m. to about 10.45 a.m. and was open for lunch from around 12 o'clock to 2 p.m. We were able to test out the Marceline Market for breakfast one morning and lunch another day. And while we really enjoyed our breakfast at the Marceline Market, we were not a big fan of the lunch selections. Now decks 10, 9, 8, 7, and 6 are all staterooms, except on deck 8 you will find the Fairy Tale Fresh Laundry, which is a central laundry facility on Disney Wish. This room features over 20 washers and dryers, along with irons and ironing boards, sinks, and even a waiting area. We're sure families will appreciate this offering, especially if you're doing a back-to-back -back cruise or coupling your Disney Wish cruise with a visit to the Walt Disney World Resort. The cost to use the facilities is $3 per wash and $3 per dry. Detergent and fabric softeners are available for $1 each. During our recent sailing at Disney Wish, we booked a guaranteed deluxe ocean stateroom with Veranda. Approximately two weeks before our sailing, we were assigned cabin 8194. This room is considered a category 05B accessible stateroom on deck 8 aft. In fact, we got lucky with this assignment as this is an aft balcony cabin, which is much larger than the approximately 243 square feet standard cabin, and it also include a larger than typical balcony. Inside the stateroom, we were greeted by a lovely princess and the frog theme. The cabin had plenty of space, H2O plus toiletries, lots of storage, and a number of power outlets and USBs, including on both sides of the bed. Given this was an accessible stateroom, it did not have the typical Disney split bathroom setup, though the bathroom was very spacious. Further, the TV has a full menu of Disney movies for free streaming. Encircling the forward sections of Deck 5 and ascending to Deck 6 near the bow is an outdoor promenade. Here you can enjoy a stroll while admiring the ocean breezes. There's a similar outdoor promenade on deck 4 midship, however these are just outdoor spaces on the port side and starboard side of the ship that do not connect with each other. Here you will find some chairs and shuffleboard. All the way forward on deck 5 you'll find the Census Spa. This spa offers all your typical treatments like massages and facials. Unique to Disney Wish is the outdoor spa area at the bow of the ship. The Census Spa includes treatment rooms, including couples treatment rooms, as well as a tranquil indoor and outdoor relaxation areas with plush loungers and swings, and the expanded Rainforest Room. The Rainforest area features a sauna, steam room, rainforest showers, 
cold room, heated loungers, and more. However, there is a separate charge to use this thermal suite. Currently pricing is $166 for a three-day cruise and $190 for a four-day cruise. If availability permits, day passes can be purchased for $79 per person. Located off the starboard side of the Census Spa is the Census Fitness Center. The state-of-the-art exercise and wellness center offers plenty of complimentary cardio and strength training equipment, as well as a cycle studio. There is also upcharge fitness classes and personal training available. Midship on deck five, you'll find the Keg and Compass on the port side. The Keg and Compass is a nautically themed pub that celebrates the stories of the sea with its decor and theming. Essentially, this is Disney Wishes version of an English style pub. With a selection of custom craft brews available exclusively for Disney Wish, a few cocktails and some wine, this is a great casual spot to relax with friends. The Keg and Compass also has an a la carte food menu. These offerings include everything from buffalo wings, to a German pretzel, to bangers and mash, or fish and chips. Prices range from $8 to $16 for these offerings, though we never saw anyone order any of these items. Across the way on the starboard side is the Triton Lounge. Named for the new class of Disney ships, the Triton Class, this lounge hosts a variety of activities during the cruise. The small intimate space with seating and a stage featured family-friendly events like karaoke, trivia, and game shows. Heading aft on deck five, on the starboard side, you'll find a Disney vacation planning desk. Also nearby, you will find a DVC desk. Another DVC desk is available on deck four. These desks were open select hours during the cruise for guests who are interested in purchasing another cruise or perhaps investing in a Disney vacation club. Located on Deck 5 Midship, you'll find the Enchanted Sword Cafe, which features the same menu as the Wishing Star Cafe, which is found one deck below it. The menu serves coffee, tea, and espresso-based drinks. The venue also serves cold brew cocktails, wines, pressed juices, and more throughout the day. Unfortunately, none of these drinks are part of the Disney Wish cruise fair. Located off the starboard side, there's the Shutter's Portrait Studio. Here, you can view all your vacation memories and purchase any photos from the cruise on the digital kiosks, which are actually scattered throughout the hallways from midship leading all the way aft. On the port side, you'll find the largest shop on Disney Wish, Mickey's Main Sale. This shop features all your favorite Disney gear and Disney Wish inaugural merchandise, like spirit jerseys, lounge flies, t-shirts, ornaments, and more. Be prepared to wait. There always seem to be a line at Mickey's main sale. We suggest stopping in on the first night of your cruise because often some of the most prized souvenirs in select sizes sell out within the first night. Heading further out on the starboard side is another youth area. Edge is dedicated to tweens ages 11 to 14 years old. This venue offers unique programming designed to engage the interests of tweens. This New York City inspired destination features an artificial grass picnic area, graphic art displays, and more. Aft on Deck 5 is the first of the three complimentary main dining rooms on Disney Wish. Disney Wish features a signature Disney Cruise Line rotational dining concept. And guests can select their preference for either an early or late dining time for the duration of their cruise. During the cruise, guests rotate between the three complimentary dining venues. Your wait staff and same table number also rotate along with you, so you get to know the cast members during your voyage. Staterooms are assigned a particular rotation so as to disperse the crowds among the three venues. On a three-day Disney Wish sailing, this means you'll get to enjoy each of the three new restaurants once or on a four day sailing, you will dine at one of the restaurants twice. You can check the Disney Cruise Line Navigator app once on board the ship to see your specific restaurant rotation. Arendelle, a frozen dining adventure, is a theater in the round entertainment venue. 
This dinner show brings the kingdom of Arendelle to life to help celebrate the royal engagement of Queen Anna and Kristoff. Picking up where Frozen 2 left off, guests are invited to their engagement party on Disney Wish. Hosted by Elsa and Olaf, this celebration is catered by none other than Oaken's Hardy Party Planning Services. Throughout the meal, guests are treated to live music, character appearances, and some special effects. The Arendelle menu features dishes inspired by Nordic cuisine. Some of our favorite items include the frozen fractals and ice harvester drinks, the ham and cheese tart, and the apple cake. Although we were slightly disappointed by the Norwegian meatballs entree and Norwegian pancake dessert. Forward on deck four are the Wonderland and Neverland cinemas, located on the port side and starboard sides of the ship, respectively. These intimate screening rooms provide guests the ability to watch classic and first-run films from Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Lucasfilm, and more. During our sailing, some of the feature movies included two of the most recent Marvel movies, including Thor, Love and Thunder, the most recent Pixar movie, Lightyear, as well as Disney Plus exclusive, including the new Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers movie, among others. Centrally located on deck four with balcony seating on deck five is a brand new entertainment venue on Disney Wish, Luna's. Luna's features a two-story LED screen wall, stage, full service bar with signature cocktails and spacious seating. This theater transforms from a daytime setting for families into a venue for adult exclusive entertainment in the evenings. Some of the activities that occurred here during our cruise included karaoke and game shows like the Matcher Mate Game Show, as well as a silent disco. Located at the back of the theater is Luna's Libations, so you might want to grab an adult beverage during the evening events. The venue also serves popcorn to enjoy during one of the movies at the nearby theaters. And one tip, if you have a refillable popcorn container from one of the Walt Disney World resorts, you can actually bring it on Disney Wish and fill the container at a discounted price. Because unfortunately, even the popcorn on Disney Wish will cost you extra money. Continuing aft on deck four, on the port side of the atrium area, there is guest services and port adventures. Guest services is your go-to spot for all your questions and concerns while on board Disney Wish. There are always cast members staffing these desks that are happy to help. If you want to avoid the long lines, you can even make an appointment in the app. Port adventures is a shore excursion desk on Disney Wish. You'll want to visit here if you have any questions about your ashore activities, or you want to book shore excursions once on board the ship. Located on deck four midship, the Wishing Star Cafe features coffee, tea, and espresso-based drinks. The venue also serves cold brew cocktails, wines, press juices, and more throughout the day. Like the coffee shop above it, it's kind of small with just a little bit of counter space and a few tables. But you can always get your drink to go. Beyond the grand hall on the port side, you'll find the Untangled Salon Disney Wish offers the fleet's first standalone venues for hairstyling and beauty services. Along with hairstyling, individuals can book pedicures, manicures, and other services. At the Untangled Salon, guests can enjoy a variety of these beauty treatments in a Rapunzel themed setting. On the starboard side of the ship, you will find the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique for all the younger princesses out there. This venue is essentially the same as the theme park counterparts, offering royal makeovers for kids. And yes, your little boys can also become a prince or a knight if they want. There are even a few dresses and outfits that are exclusive to Disney Cruise Line available at the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique on Disney Wish. Heading further aft on the starboard side, you'll find Hook's Bobbery. 
where men can indulge in their own pampering. This venue actually even includes a whiskey bar for the gents. Special events and whiskey tastings also occur here. Services include haircuts, a fresh shave, as well as other treatments. And while there's no bar menu, individuals can create their own smoked old fashioned from the available syrups, spirits, and smoked woods at the Barbary while waiting for a shave and a haircut. Aft on Deck 4 is the World of Marvel, the second of the complimentary Disney Wish restaurants. Here our guests play an interactive role in an Avengers mission via the story that unfolds on the digital screens around the venue. During Avengers Quantum Encounter, Ant-Man and the Wasp may even make a special appearance. Of course, there's a menu that goes along with the show. The menu features selections from the real and fictional settings of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Some of our favorite dishes from the world of Marvel include the jumbo fried shrimp appetizer and the desserts, but we felt the entrees were just average. Honestly, this was our least favorite of the dining experiences on Disney Wish. The Walt Disney Theater is located on Deck 3 forward, with balcony seating on Deck 4. This two-level, 1,274-seat theater is home to three shows. However, during our cruise, one of those shows, Aladdin, a musical spectacular, was not running. On day one, you'll find the Embarkation Day celebration, Disney's Seize the Adventure, which is a review show featuring your favorite Disney characters. We would liken it to a show you might find at a Disney theme park. There's also the brand new Broadway style adaptation of The Little Mermaid with scenes, songs, and characters from the original film. We really enjoyed this approximately 60 minute show. When it finally debuts, Disney's Aladdin, a musical spectacular, will be a musical comedy with a reimagined adaptation of the guest favorite found across the DCL fleet. On both sides of the theater entrance is Preludes. This is your go-to spot to grab a drink or some popcorn before the nightly entertainment occurring in this venue. Centrally located on Deck 3, there are a variety of shops. These include Treasures Untold, Three Wishes, Once Upon a Time, Royal Regalia, and Enchanted Castle Jewels. These stores sell everything from jewelry to handbags to clothing and more, and are only open when the ship's not docked at Port Call. Centrally located around the shops is one of the most elegant Disney Wish bars, the Bayou. This venue is themed to the Princess and the Frog film, with magnolia blossoms, lily pads, and a canopy of twinkling fireflies overhead. The Bayou is certainly one of the best spots for adults on this new ship. The New Orleans theme carries over to the bar's menu as well, with creative cocktails, specialty coffees, and even beignets. There's even some live music to go along with your drinks. We highly recommend you stop in the bayou at least once to try one of the signature cocktails. We recommend a hurricane. Right next door to the bayou, located on the port side of Deck 3, you will find the Star Wars Hyperspace Lounge which is styled as a luxurious star cruiser from the Star Wars universe. During a visit to this bar, guests embark on a space jumping tour of the Star Wars galaxy. While sipping galactically inspired drinks from the menu, you'll be transported to iconic locations via hyperspace. The theming, digital imagery, and the cocktails, of course, make this one bar that you shouldn't miss on Disney Wish. Yes, there's even a $5,000 drink on the menu if you want to live large. However, the rest of the cocktails are more reasonably priced. This venue is reserved exclusively for adults in the evenings, but kids are allowed to visit during the day. Given this venue is small, reservations are required and can be made once on board the ship. During our cruise, they started taking reservations around 1 p.m. in the Triton Lounge. Our reservation entitles guests to 45 minutes in the lounge, which for us was plenty of time. 
Another one of the signature Disney Wish bars is Nightingales. Also located on the port side of Deck 3, Nightingales is a Cinderella-inspired piano bar. The bar serves an extensive list of wines, champagnes, and other craft cocktails. With a modern design, the bar features a glittering chandelier above the piano and other metallic accents. This venue is a wonderful extension of the fairy tale inspired Grand Hall. The Grand Hall takes center stage on Disney Wish. This grand atrium welcomes all guests who board the ship on embarkation day on Deck 3. Glistening with Disney magic, this three-story space is the heart of the ship. This area evolves from a gathering space to a theater through the use of special effects and includes the first atrium stage on a Disney ship with character meet and greets and the magical Kiss Goodnight light show, plus so much more. Who could forget the grand staircase, the starry chandelier, and the life-size Cinderella statue that adorns the Grand Hall? This might just be the most selfie-worthy location on the ship. The final Disney Wish rotational restaurant is 1923. Named for the year the Walt Disney Company was founded, 1923 is a celebration of the company. The decor in this venue pays homage to the golden age of animation and its Californian heritage. It includes drawings, props, and other tools of the trade. The restaurant has two smaller venues, the Walt Disney and Roy Disney, located on the port side and starboard sides of the ship, respectively. These venues are aptly named for the men behind the Disney magic. Some of our favorite dishes at 1923 include the Riverside Old Fashioned Cocktail, the Burrata, the Filet Mignon, and Apple Cheesecake. While we enjoyed the show at Arendelle, the food selections at 1923 were the best of the three restaurants. Deck 2 Midship is where you'll find Disney's Oceaneer Club. This area is for kids ages 3 to 12 years old. With a whimsical slide entrance from the Grand Hall above, this area features a number of well-themed play areas. These include the Fairy Tale Hall, Marvel Superhero Academy, Star Wars Cargo Bay, and Walt Disney Imagineering Lab. Your kids will have endless opportunities for fun, including storytelling, arts and crafts, dress up, toys and games, watching Disney movies, and so much more. The Marvel Superhero Academy is a high-tech Avengers headquarters where young recruits train to be the next generation of superheroes with characters like Spider-Man, Black Panther, Ant-Man, and the Wasp. Star Wars Cargo Bay is a first-of-its-kind immersive experience where children take on the important role of managing the mischievous creatures from across the galaxy. The Fairy Tale Hall includes Rapunzel's Art Studio, Belle's Library, and Anna and Elsa's Summer House. At the Walt Disney Imagineering Lab, kids can discover the secrets of Disney Imagineers with hands-on activities. At the Ride Studio, kids can even create a coaster and then climb into a capsule where they virtually ride their masterpieces. Finally, for the younger kids, there's Mickey and Minnie Captain's Deck. This area is a nautically themed playground inspired by the colors, icons, and magic of Disney Cruise Line. Now, even if you don't have kids, the Oceaneers Club hosts open house hours where adults can explore and check out these amazing play areas for themselves. Also located in this area is the It's a Small World Nursery. For the littlest cruisers ages six months to three years old, 
And this nursery offers babysitting services in a setting inspired by the iconic Disney attraction of the same name. These services are an upcharge. Now, while Disney Cruise Line does offer a lot of activities and events for kids, there's plenty for adults to enjoy on the ship as well. In fact, the wife and I just cruised on Disney with just the two of us because we have no kids and we had a fantastic time. We put together this brand new video of the eight reasons why adults will love Disney Wish. So if you don't think Disney Wish is right for you, think again.